I want to say a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Spring is in full swing here in Vancouver. The flowers are blooming, the days are getting longer, but before we move on completely from winter, I want to have one more crack at the cold. So recently, Brennan sent me some information on a guy named Wim Hof, also known as the Iceman. Wim Hof is an extreme athlete who has set world records for swimming under ice and still holds the record for a barefoot half marathon on ice and snow. In 2011, Justin Rosales wrote a book with Wim called Becoming the Iceman, about his own experience trying to master Wim Hof's techniques for cold exposure, deep breathing, and meditation. In the next 21 days, I wanna see if I can master Wim Hof's techniques by following the steps laid out in their book. But for this challenge, we're gonna do something a little bit different. That's because this is gonna be the first challenge where Cam and I are competing against each other. We'll each be building our own routines based off the advice in this book, and at the end of the challenge, I'm gonna fly out to BC, where we'll both try our hands at swimming in ice cold glacier water. We each have 21 days to train, starting right now. So it is day one, and I've been reading and watching some of Wim Hof's tutorial videos. One of the things he talks extensively about is the importance of deep breath. As he describes, you wanna fill your lower lungs, your upper lungs, and then up even into your headspace. The weight will feel like it's going belly, chest, and then brain. So I'm gonna lay down the mat, do three sets of 30, and see where that gets me. It takes me about 15 minutes to go through Wim's exercises, with the only challenge really being to stay focused and not get distracted. Once my breathing exercises are done, I take a walk outside in shorts and a t-shirt to see if it had any effect on my internal temperature. So, been outside for 15 minutes, all right. Everyone who I've passed by has given me a side eye. They're walking around with like long sleeve jackets, some pants, and I feel pretty good. The only thing that's really been uh, making me uh, feel a little chilly is whenever I get a gust of wind. So for the past five minutes, I just jumped on the swing set. I was doing some swinging to try and get as much wind and to try and cut my body with as much cold as possible. And feel good, still feel really good. All right, my first round of breathing exercises is complete and it was relatively painless. I experienced a little bit of lightheadedness and pressure in my head during the first set, but I'd say midway through the second set, I felt pretty good and nice and relaxed into it. And this is actually an area that I think I have a huge advantage on Brendan with, and that's because I have eight years of singing training. A huge part of singing is being able to control your breath and breathe and maximize your oxygen intake and then control it during vocal lines. And so having that experience and that training in my past, I think it's gonna give me a leg up on Brendan for being able to monitor and control my breath when we're in cold water. So here's to hoping that will give me an edge on him and uh, help me win this thing. The next step is to prepare myself for the cold. For the next 20 days, I start each morning with a cold shower. This is my first ice bath. So far my legs have been in here for about two minutes and they're feeling pretty good. What I am terrified of is getting the rest of my body, stomach to shoulders, submerged in the water. That is going to be the next step. So. So far, without question, my favorite part of this challenge has been the daily deep breathing routine. It's a good time for me to take 20 minutes to set aside and focus in on my breath, and it's been really, really relaxing. On the other side of things, I don't feel like cold showers are doing quite enough to get me fully prepared for the cold temperatures I'm gonna face on top of the mountain. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna get up bright and early and go to the ocean to do a full submerge in the cold water. In addition to doing full body exposure, the book recommends spending specific time acclimatizing your hands and feet to the cold, as these are the areas of your body that will be most vulnerable once you're in the freezing temperature. So today, I am dunking my hands and feet in a bucket of ice water, and my goal is to work myself through what Jonathan Rosales describes as the three stages of cold exposure. Stage one is the shocked, stinging sensation that hits when your body is first exposed to the cold. This period is usually short-lived, lasting 30 to 40 seconds before your body begins to relax and enter into stage two. Once you're here, the pain should dissipate, 
and your body should enter a relaxed, numb sensation, which I'm finding is lasting me usually three to four minutes, given that this is my first time. Once the pain starts to return and your body starts to feel a tingling, burning sensation, now you're entering stage three. And here is where you don't wanna push yourself more than just a few seconds before you remove your body from the cold. If you push yourself too hard, you can enter stage four, which is danger territory. Once you're in stage four, you can lose feeling in your hands and feet for up to days on end. You can get frostbite and even cause permanent damage. So once you feel that pain starting to return, don't be stupid, don't push yourself, get out and get warm. On day 19, I fly out to Vancouver to meet up with Cam for the final test of our challenge. Welcome. Oh. Yeah. 9K up, 9K down. That's the thing, like if we're up 9K, <laughs> what happens if one of us is like, oh, I feel like I'm in stage four and I can't get warm. Is there a, do we have like a contingency on that? There's like park rangers that we could call. Uh, With walkies? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> a big part of my strategy is being able to willpower my way through the cold, but if either one of us push it too far up there, we could be in serious, serious trouble with no access to help. So we started our day off at 8 a.m. this morning when we hit the road. Right now we have arrived at the trailhead and we have a nine kilometer hike ahead of us before we get to our freezing cold lake. This guy does all the fitness challenges. <laughs> Yet, here he is, a shell, a husk. <laughs> I don't know how far we went for distance, but the first like 35 minutes killed me. My legs were not expecting that incline. And since then, everything's kind of evened out a little bit. I was just like, I'm not ready for two and a half hours if this is what it's gonna be like. It was not fun. So we are approaching about the four hour mark of this hike. We've come across two lakes and they've both been really pretty and completely frozen solid. <laughs> Which means we're no closer to actually getting to test any of the stuff we've been trying out than we were when we left and that's starting to get a little frustrating, a little stressful. Uh, I think our last recourse is to try and find some moving water, something with the current that hasn't frozen over, but that water is going to be so, so freaking cold. Found our spot finally after uh, much searching. I am very, very happy, but at the same time, very sad that I have to do this. It's like all hitting me right now. So we're about to do this thing for real. Uh, we're gonna get in some some freezing cold, snowy waters. Why do we do this? Why? Like, why did we choose this as a challenge? After the trek to get here, my legs are sore, my shoulders are sore. My feet ache, so I'm just telling myself this is gonna be like a nice, refreshing ice bath at this point. <laughs> and that's, that's the only thing I'm telling myself right now. The main points of my strategy for today is to, number one, rely on the breathing that I've been doing. Also, I'm gonna try to do a tiny bit of exercise if I can to get my heart rate up so it doesn't go crazy when I get into the water. And then, hopefully from there, I should be uh, smooth sailing. I picked up these nasal strips because I've been having some sinus problems, but breathing through your nose is typically a calming exercise, so I wanna be able to get a good flow of oxygen because deep breathing is gonna be a major part of this challenge once I'm in the water. So hopefully these will help open up my nose, get me some like nice deep breaths and keep my body calm. Without further ado, let it begin. So, time begins when I get in the water. Let's go. Oh. 
Feeling a bit settled in. I got control of my breathing though, so that's one, good. That's one minute. My hands are the biggest thing that hurt, but the rest of my body feels okay. I'm getting shivers. My body's kind of convulsing a little bit. Most of me feels fine, which is weird. It's just like little things that hurt. Your four minutes. My hands are changing colors. Oh, my whole torso is shaking now. It's not just my hands. I've got shivers. Oh. Okay, I'm getting to the end. Seconds. How many? Fifteen. Ten seconds. Oh, my hands hurt so much. Five minutes. Okay. I'll call that. I'll call that. I'll call oh that. I'll gosh, call that. Your body's red. I can't move my hands very well. Yeah, I'm definitely like in stage three right now where my body's tingling. That water was. Very cold, <laughs> very, very cold. I definitely would not have been able to do that when I started this. There's no way I would have been able to do that. <laughs> Once Cam is situated, that means it is my turn. If I have one concern going into this right now, it is that my sneakers got soaked on the way in, so my feet have been exposed pretty much for the past 30, 40 minutes while we've been doing our prep. So that, I think, is gonna be the weakest link for me. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't wind up being too big of a factor. Whew, that's cold. <laughs> I feel really relaxed right now, but I am not gonna lie, that felt like a lot longer than a minute. Getting into stage two, hands are starting to burn a little bit, but everything else feels really relaxed. I'm getting the shakes about the same point you did. Just the hands. It's just the hands that hurt. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're numb. They're numb. That's that's a bad feeling. Oh man, if it weren't for my hands and my feet, I could have stayed in there even longer. Bro, that's what I'm saying yeah. too. My hands hurt. Yeah. My hands really hurt, so do my feet. And that was not the case in my training. I did a lot of cold water exposure for just specifically hands and feet, and they were pretty good. So I did some homework last night. 
and it looks like, based on the time of year, the water we were in was somewhere between 4 degrees Celsius and minus 2, Ugh. which I believe if you stay in past about 15 minutes is when hypothermia will tend to kick in. After 15? 15 minutes, yeah. Hmm. Was it worth it? Are you glad you did it? Actually, yeah. Yeah, I am. I thought the process and being able to see my growth from day one to the final cold water dip was pretty drastic. So being yeah. able to monitor my progress like that is pretty cool. My perception going into this with the breathing <laughs> was that um, adding oxygen was going to be a way to like re-regulate my body's internal temperature. I never found that actually came to, came to fruition, but what it did was it kind of gave me this muscle memory that once I jumped in the water or once I got in, and that like cold shock, shock started to take over, mm. zoning in and just trying to focus in on my breathing and get that stable really was the thing that I found helped me calm and made me able to just kind of like chill in, chill out there for like the next four minutes. Yeah, oh definitely, like the breathing aided so much in getting past that initial shock where your body is hyperventilating, it's panicking, wanting to get out of this cold water. Being able to rely on your breath to calm your body down and to fully take control of how you're breathing just helps you to ease in and get over the initial shock. So glad you did it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I never thought I would say that, but yeah, I am glad I did it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cheers, son. Cheers, my dude. Hey, guys. I just want to say two quick points before we wrap up. First off, please don't try and do outdoor cold exposure by yourself or without access to a warm space for afterward. Jonathan Rosales lays out again and again in his book just how dangerous this can be. And if you do want to try this challenge yourself and you want to read John's book, we've got a link for you in the description below. Secondly, I want to say a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace provides users with a powerful and beautiful online platform from which you can build your own website. You can choose from tons of designer and award-winning templates. These are created with modern browsers and mobile apps in mind, making their templates accessible to cell phones, tablets, whatever the device, as well as being sleek and well-designed. Squarespace allows you to link your various social media accounts to your website so you can post simultaneously to all accounts. Go to squarespace.com slash guys to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Thank you again for watching and we will, we will, I promise, have another video next week. See you then.